Greetings. We'll wait until at least five after here to see um, if anyone shows up. If not sure if this is a holiday. Oh, there's Tom. There we go. Hi. Hey, Tom. How are you? I'm all right. Were you here last week? Uh, no, I thought there was no meeting last week. All right. I didn't think so. Um, I'm wondering if there's another holiday for other folks today. Or everybody's Cyber Monday shopping, trying to get sales. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Were you were you were you off on leave all of next week? Uh, sorry, last week or? Just... Uh, partly, yeah. Um, yeah, that was the plan. I had to do a bit oh. of work, but it always gets in the way. Yeah. We already got the talk open, but there's the link. What's that? Uh, meeting notes. Just shared the link. Yeah. But I assume we've probably already got it open. Uh, we'll give it a couple more minutes and see who joins. Sounds good. No public holidays I'm aware of today. So let's see, we can remove one summit from this one. Yep, and the elephant DTF. No. That can go as well. Right. Okay, well, let's make a start. Um, so yeah, so the only upcoming event on the list at the moment is KubeCon EU in April. Um, I think we see if we've just written that. So more info on the December the 5th. I think that's both the marketing prospectus and also any um, program committee interest form. Um, I've, I know I've had... Um, uh, I can't remember his name, which is awful. Um, chap from Swisscom who was there last year has expressed an interest in uh, helping on the programme committee so once we've got a form for that it'd be good to share um, CFP's closed okay um, but that's only for the main event I think the colo CFP date is later I think isn't it um, 
yeah, the Cloud Native Telco Day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, and not open yet. Um, yeah. Okay. Try to have it open in December. Okay, sounds good. Um, so, are gender... there any other telco events that you know of that would be interesting and good that <clears throat> for us to write, write in here? Um, nothing global, no. Yeah. Um, I'm aware, for example, there's the layer one, two, three, something or other congress. Which oh, is yeah. happening in December. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you can see my screen. If you can, apologies. The Layer 123 World Congress is on. Uh, let's have a look. I can't find the link. But there's a cloud native telco bit to that, like a round table. Um, I don't know how like global or um, kind of relevant that is for everybody. Right. We've actually uh, talked with folks in the past for the layer one, two, three. Um, I think there may have even been a presentation or at least request. I'm trying to remember. That one would be a good one. Just, I guess, to write it in or I can add it to the. Yeah. That's, oh, that's in December. That's like right now, isn't it? Yeah, it's um, next Monday to Wednesday. Oh, okay. Um, but I only, I only, I got an email from um, one of the organisers. What was his name? Milad. He puts together the agenda. Right. Um, but no, I'm not aware of anything else other than that. Looks like um, Robbie's going to be there. <clears throat> oh, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. As a speaker. Excellent. Um, scrolling through the speaker list here. All right. Anything in um, next year, first or second quarter? That so there's, um, so I was at the UK Kubernetes Community Days event last week in London. Right. And the CEO of Open UK, Amanda Brock, mentioned she was organizing an all about open source conference i can't remember what it was called i can't remember the url which is irritating um i can see if i can find it on twitter um
Oh no, sorry, not all about open. Stateofopen.com. Um, I can't actually get to the website on this machine because it's a newly registered domain and my work security policies don't allow me to browse such things. All right. That might be of interest. I don't know if it's, again, whether it's UK kind of focused or just generally about open source, but that might be interesting. Um, looking at it, that is in London on the 7th and 8th of February. But it's just like an open source conference or, or more in general or? Yeah, so it's not telco specific. It's it's open source sort of generic. Right. Yeah, agreed. Schedule coming soon. <laughs> Incredible lineup coming soon. <laughs> okay, we can't <laughs> say who's my <laughs> Have you been there in the past? I think this is the first iteration of it. All right. From what she was saying last week. So I don't know if you know who Open UK are. They're, they're a non-profit body that advocates for open source and open data, um, primarily within government contracts and um, technology implementations. I think, um, but they, you know, they've, they've, they've brought branched out into kind of supporting open source in general. All right. Sounds good. So what about the, the Linux Foundation uh, conferences like the um, the Open Source Summit? Um, I know that it's going to be one in Japan, but I don't know if after that one, if they have announced what is going to be the next one. You know? Um, Open Source Summit North America will be in Vancouver in 2023. That's May, though. Oh, OK. I guess that's fine. It's uh, after KubeCon. Uh, let's see, when is the Europe? Europe is September. So even after that, in Spain, Open Source Summit. Yeah, so 19th to 21st September. And then KubeCon North America, November 6th to 10th mm -hmm. next year. Well, there's quite a few things happening in Japan. Cloud Open, Container Con. I wonder if they're all co-located with the Open Source Summit. It's all at the same time. Oh, yeah, these are all, I see that, yeah. Mm -hmm. December. Yep. All right. Okay, let's move on then. <clears throat> if there's no more events to write. Is there, is there anything that you have, Victor? Interesting events coming next year? No, no, I haven't checked anything, but yeah, I will start looking for. Okay. Um, so other agenda items, I thought it was worth for those of you who went to the one summit um, and potentially any of the attached events like the LFN DTF or NEFIO summit, whether 
there was any kind of good feedback or interesting things to share with the group? Sure. Uh, do you want to start, Taylor, or I can start? <laughs> um, I, I, the very first thing that came to my mind, I mean, there's a lot of different things going on, but um, I did s talk with someone from the German Germany Agriculture Department that's doing uh, sustainability um, agriculture, and they're they're using uh, Kubernetes with their IoT devices that are going all out um, all over the place. So um, interesting on the sustainability and energy stuff. And I think there's some relation to, well, the, I mean, they were literally at the, the one summit and um, um, the developer forum and talking about the networking aspects and everything else. So I had some conversations with them and hoping to get them engaged because I think the best practice area for the um, sustainability and energy stuff would tie in with the CNCF's efforts on, so they have a, a, a group that's focused on sustainability yeah. and with best practices that we're looking at that overlaps into networking telecom. So hoping to get them engaged. Um, and they had a pretty interesting talk. That's kind of maybe one of the ones that's more um, off of what we would, I would normally have been thinking about going into uh, that specific conference versus the mm -hmm. telecom networking focus. Uh, Victor? The, yeah, well, the one thing that really surprised me about, the, um, especially from from the ONS um, conference, or, or I don't know, like maybe it's more like um, developer testing forum. Uh, I just uh, found like there's a lot of efforts in the in the ONAP side. Um, that was a surprise for me because I, Consider like it's a. Uh, I didn't see too much um, interaction before, but um, it seems like uh, the community is still trying to to get in there. Um, the last day of the last session of the last day, they were talking about the integration with Nephew, so they are retaking the the efforts to try to uh, connect on up with uh, Kubernetes uh, different ways. Um, they didn't know how to do it, but they have an idea, like the different components that they have to modify, like SO and DC, um, what is the name, DC, DCO, I think so as well. So, but yeah, they're, they're still um, very heavy interesting on that. Um, about Nephew in particular, um, yeah, most of the comments that I heard was like, uh, that they are trying to, Cover too much, um, and they they are like putting um, a lot of high expectations on that project. Um, so, but in general, I guess that there are cert certain technologies that has to be learned uh, for for that. One of them is KPT, uh, a cat. I don't know how they pronounce it. Um, uh, so. Yeah, it's, it's one of the crucial uh, Google's uh, tool that they are promoting for, for, for Nephew. Um, so, and, and obviously they are trying to replace Helm, so they don't want to use Helm. They want to offer, uh, or, or the way that they are suggesting to create CNFs are through um, operators. So, yeah, so basically it's, it's a kind of radical suggestion and more cloud native ways to do things. Um, let's see how the, the telco industry is, is, is open to, uh, to accept all these uh, new ways to, to accept the development. So it was, it was kept, um, 
the the alternative to Helm. So yeah, it's um, I don't know what what cap terms. Uh, yeah, it, well, without e, um, key PT. Uh, this one. No, no, no. It's um, key um, P as a Peter and T as a Tom. Um, yeah, just that one. So it seems like kind of provides similar thing like um, like Helm. So, but using um, what is the name? Um, Yeah, they have a different approach, but so so basically, it's it's pretty much like having a CNF using GitOps. That's that's the idea. Like uh, develop all these uh, instead of like like ONAP when when you create like a CNF in or PNF in ONAP, so you have to go through the to a workflow where like like a PNF vendor has to review it and approve and do all these yeah. things in, in ONAP. So with um, with Nafio, basically you're going to have the similar workflow, but more like a GitOps um, manner. So yeah. you will have the similar like um, um, review and approval process, but yeah, it's, you're, basically you're approving the, the pull requests and things like that. Um, yeah. so, so they are also using the backstage uh, technology. Uh, it's like a, a, a Spotify uh, tool. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's quite interesting, like uh, what they are doing. So hopefully, all these uh, new ways has been accepted by the, the industry because yeah, they are still just in on up and try, trying to figure out how to use on up. And now you propose a new ways to do things. So obviously, um, I don't know if they they want to reinvest on all these things. Okay, interesting. Thank you. Um, any other comments from those events before we move on? Oh, um, just triggered a thought actually. Um, so Taylor, you were asking about Silver the other day, um, which I know was launched at mm -hmm. the One Summit. Um, I don't know if you wanted a kind of brief overview of what it is and what it aims to achieve. Yeah, that'd be great. So, um, it started as an idea of um, building a production ready open source telco cloud stack, um, which obviously sounds a little bit like what's been done in OpenStack and other places before, um, and has morphed slightly into um, what's being called a software framework, um, whereby the companies working within the Silver project will aim to develop features and fixes to common telco concerns or problems that exist in existing open source projects. So rather than focusing purely on being a kind of, here's a new way of integrating Kubernetes and you know, stuff, um, Let's, let's all club together and work on something that's an issue for telcos in open source projects, whether that's Kubernetes or not. Um, the, the, the kind of background to it is um, the EU has a program called Important Project Common European Interest, IPCEI. Um, and this was deemed one of them, um, hence why it's being registered with LF Europe, which was, in a, which was launched at the OSS summit in September, I think. Um, so whilst, whilst it's been launched from Europe, there is 
a desire to try and make sure it doesn't become a Europe only thing. Um, the challenge with it is that some of the participants are also pushing the idea of testing and validation center as part of the project, which, um, which obviously then brings it into kind of closer overlap with things like the Assured by Annika um, program and the CNF certification program. Um, and so there are a few of us on, who were involved, myself, Gerge, um, Georg from Ericsson, We've all made the point that there needs to be not just reuse of things like the CNF test suite, but also contributions to it from the Silver project, um, so that it's as useful and valid as we can make it. So hopefully that's the direction of travel. Is is you know the the people who the telcos and so on provide to work on Silver actually end up working on you know, Kubernetes pull requests and um, you know, DPDK pull requests and CNF test suite pull requests and so on. Um, but we'll see, it's been launched for a week, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Uh, have you heard an interest um in collaboration and i guess the feedback contribution loop from folks that may be able to join in addition to people that are you know already here um so the the only interest i've heard so so to the the, the seven initial members are vodafone telefonica orange Deutsche Telekom, Telekom Italia, Nokia, Ericsson. Um, mm -hmm. I've I've heard of interest from HPE, Dell, and Intel. Personally, um, I know from talking to other people from those companies I just mentioned that other network vendors like Mavenir have expressed interest in the past. So, not not specifically any other operators, but um but um i i'm kind of stepping away from silver and someone else in vodafone is sort of taking my place because we we're, we're kind of moving it more towards the, the work we're doing with open run rather the work i do on mobile core um we think silver has more interest in our run space so it's being run by someone else in Vodafone. So they may have had more interest from other people, but I don't know. All right. Yeah, it'd be nice to get um, some of those folks engaged in our working group and- Definitely. Yeah, get them maybe talking about what the needs are so that we can align it and think of if i mean if they're incorporating some now we want to make sure that what are where are they going and what's yeah. missed. um yeah. what about the oran then if unless anyone has any questions or comments about silva so the only thing i'd add to what you were just saying is um so what i, what I can do now is share more openly with then the CNF test suite, the CNF working group, and suggest contributions into it. Um, before Silver launched, we were operating under an MOU legal framework, uh -huh. of understanding. So there was a kind of limit to kind of how public and open to, to an extent that we could be, and how involved in other things we could get. And how much we could share about what was going on, but now it's now it's properly launched with the Linux Foundation. That's all. That barrier is gone. So, um, so I'm happy to share that information with the people who are running the validation center stuff within Silver. That, that's easy for me to do. All right. Sounds great. Does anyone have questions? for Tom about Silva. 
probably I need to start checking that the links and read the information maybe. Yeah, any questions, just let me know. Okay. What about, about yeah. yeah, I was just. Um, do you see areas where we could have collaboration and work with the Overend project? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, I know some of some of the some of the Overend software elements are going to be Kubernetes based. Um, so I think the concept of being able to certify them using a something like the CNF test suite certainly sounds sensible to me. What about um, overlap with, is there gonna be incorporation of ideas and and technology that Silva and FIO or any other projects that's trying to do cloud native uh, stack, I'll just call it stack, wherever it is on the stack, all the way down to hardware. Yeah. Over in look at NFIO or Silva. Um, so I don't think there's any overlap between Silva and Nephio. So Nephio is, is concerned with the life cycle management of cloud native network functions. Whereas Silver is concerned with the, the execution environment. So the, the Kubernetes layer and kind of cluster management of Kubernetes down. So it's not, um, so in effect, I think there's a, quite a clean delineation between what Silver's concerns are and what Nephew's concerns are. If I think about other things like some of the projects in the OpenStack or Open Infra Foundation, there is probably some overlap with things like Acroino and Starling X and so on. Um, and I'm not sure I could give a good answer as to why a new thing has been spun up. Um, other than trying to fix what was potentially not perfect with those other solutions. But um, but again, Silver isn't, isn't going to try and be opinionated about the hardware in terms of, you know, you have to use this vendor or this particular type. Um, other than potentially some functionality features like DPDK and so on. Right. Tom, do you see any um, probably relation with a uh, Anuket project or like how Silva can yeah. be combined with Anuket? Yeah. So, so one of the things um, myself and Gerge and Georg especially the three of us were trying to push from a quite an early stage was, you know, we, we, we spent a lot of time building the Anakit reference architecture and the reference performance tests in Anakit. And there was a concern that Silver would be duplicating that effort. What we, what we managed to achieve was that we, S Silver is now going to essentially be a an implementation of the Anakit reference architecture. So within Anakit, there's a reference implementation, but it, it, is, it is purely a reference implementation that is used to test the reference conformance test suite and framework. And the reference implementation isn't particularly useful for kind of an external party to Anakit. So, um, you know, the, the goal of Anakit and the reference architecture was always, you know, community and or vendor implementations would be based upon it. So the Anakit specifications would provide input to the requirements of a, of a stack that would then be deployed. 
more deployable. And that's the plan with silver is that the anecdote reference architecture specs are, you know, input requirements to the stack. And so the, the gaps that Anakit finds for, I don't know, certain Kubernetes features or Maltus features or something else, they could then end up being the, you know, the, the PRs, the issues that the silver collaborators work on, if mm. that makes sense. So I, th I think, so I think there's a, there's a kind of double edge to its relationship with Anakit. There's, it will be a consumer of the Anakit reference architecture. Um, however, I think its relationship with the reference conformance tests and the Anakit badging process is similar to that of the, its relationship to the CNF test suite and the CNF certification program in that there's a, there's a risk it becomes a, you know, uses the test suite, um, sorry, the Anakit reference conformance tests and then adds new ones that are specific to silver without contributing those back to Anakit. Um, and again, you know, we've tried to highlight that, that that silver should be contributing back to Anika as well as the CNF test suite, but um, it's kind of dependent on on the project itself, making sure that happens. Hmm. That's always a problem. To answer your question. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, thanks. Cool. So. Okay. Um, okay. Are there any other questions on silver or anything else that relate to that? If not, we'll pop onto the issues and PR review. I can't okay. think of anything right now, but I'm going to go dig in and probably have more for you later. Uh -huh. Yeah, sure. Okay, so the no pull requests open. Um, issues, there are no new ones open. Um, I have not had a chance to do anything on the one that's assigned to me. Um, chat window. Um, I don't know, Victor or Taylor, whether you've got any updates on the others. I haven't had a chance to to work on them. Okay. Yeah, nothing for me. I have been thinking about it a little bit over, I guess, last week or early, early in the week and um, thinking, what do we want to get? What can we get completed? What do we want to complete? And um, the... So, I mean, some of the smaller ones are definitely, you know, like a type that add title to exception stock, we just need to knock out. Um, mm -hmm. The bottom one, don't run containers with privilege flag. That would be the, I think, related to more of the um, stuff that I do think we should focus on and trying to see how it's going to tie in with other things to accomplish. We've been talking about it for a while, but get, getting more of the best practices, it would be, um, there's, I, I would like to get some out. And if y'all are available, either one for maybe working session to get through some that we already have content and it's more of working to take the content and put it in the format. I'd like to do that. And then in addition, maybe, start working on a write-up which could be a loose version of the best practice where we we're not working about it being perfect but you know the summary title and and some of the other sections for a best practice or set of practices that are related to like silva or and whatever that we can say here is something that we're working on um, and see if we can get other folks interested so there's the one where we know that you know let's just get these out to so the the containers of privilege flag and 
other ones that are security related that are content. That's fine. But we we want to get other people engaged. And I think if we can have some topics where they're already part of it, then that would be good. Um, uh, take what we're talking about. So that's kind of where mm -hmm. I'm thinking I want to focus some time over the next, you know, I know we're coming to the end of the year, but through the end of the year and into next year, how do we get so more people engaged? Yeah. So you think in, you know, like a couple of hour working session to sort of batter out the wording and get it into a point where it's ready to be merged? Yeah, that's it. And, you know, as we're doing that, um, if we're thinking of other ideas for one, I'd like to get, you know, a Google Doc or something set up where we just start throwing those in there and building out um, the next one. But get, yeah. get, get, you know, one of them or however many we feel like where we already have content, um, spend that time. And that's beside these items on here, like the add title to exception stock, um, you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. If y'all are up for it, I'll, I'll try to throw out some times and. Yeah, I yeah. think that makes sense. I think it'd be a good way of doing it. All right. Okay. Any other anything? Anyone? I think that's it. Thanks. Really. Awesome. Um, no. No worries. Catch you later. Thank you. See you. I know. Bye. Bye.